Namaste. So we, in the series on thoughts and aphorisms, we'll take up today aphorism number 16 from thoughts and aphorisms. They are part of uh, collected works of the mother where the commentaries are given. So the aphorism is, do not, like so many modern disputants, smother thought under polysyllables or charm inquiry to sleep by the spell of formulas and cant words. Search always, find out the reason for things which seem to the hasty glance to be mere chance or illusion. So this is part of the jnana. So there is a word used, polysyllables. Now we know polysyllables is where more than two uh, vowels are used in a single word. That will be polysyllable. So it very useful in poetry. Sounds come with the vowels. So in a word if you use more than two vowels. For example, surrounded is a polysyllable. So you have U, you have O and you have E. So it becomes a polysyllable. So polysyllables and formulas and cant words. What is it? One of the formulas, for example, which people take with regard to fate. God does everything. Charm the enquiry to sleep. What about so much evil? Now, you know, it becomes difficult. So, burden of evil has to be borne by somebody. So, man is... <laughs> so, so, nowadays people are asking, but who made man? Who made man with all his durgun and uh, this uh, limitation? <laughs> Shabinda is the only one who has taken this to its ultimate possibility of logic. But normally we charm enquiry to sleep by saying you are not supposed to ask these things. Because it is not correct. I have been scolded at the age of seven in one of those pandijis giving a talk and suddenly my mother made a mistake of taking me to the mandir and he was giving a talk and suddenly I raised the hand and said, I have a question. Guruji very happily said, okay, ask. And my mother is trying to put me down, knowing what is going to come. I asked, he answered, I asked, he answered, I asked. Then he got very annoyed. Your child, he said in Hindi, your child asked too many questions. <laughs> so, I thought, what is wrong with it? I didn't know that time. Sometime I will be asked too many questions. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with it? It is not appealing to me. Why? Because there was a lady there staying, I still remember, who was a widow. Very nice lady. I really was very fond of this lady. Very gracefully she had grown old. But being a widow, she was not staying in her house. So she was given a place in the temple. She was used to wear white. So it started from that. Why is she wearing white? That lady had not complained anything. She was very happy. Why she is not staying in her house? So it started from there. And then finally, obviously, there are no answers. So you, you, you uh, have to either charm the inquiry to sleep or to say, don't question. So Shirobindu says, what we should do? Search. There is a reason. We have to find the reason. Maybe even in this there is a reason. But we have to find the reason. So that reason has to be found. Nor hastily say, no, 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 all this is nonsense. There is a reason and one has to find. So the question asked is, how can we find out the reason for things? If we try to do it with the mind, will it not be yet another illusion screening the truth? Quite so. We may give reasons, we may give hundred reasons, we may say a karma for instance. So there are several ways we can cover the face of truth is covered by many many uh, brilliant and dark shields hardly anyone reaches that golden lid so here the mother tells us something interesting mother's answers are addressing a larger perspective always and especially in these conversations she is addressing the consciousness of those who are around so she starts by saying there are many planes or zones of the mind. From the plane of the physical mind, the lower zone of ordinary thoughts, 
full of error and ignorance and falsehood to the plane of the higher mind which receives in the form of intuitions the rays of the supramental truth so there is physical mind what does it say because you were sleeping with your feet turned towards god therefore you have to suffer mm-hmm. poor god and poor man i mean <laughs> what a heartless god you will be but physical mind has to find some very gross physical reason and we have built all kinds of formulas around it isn't it if you do this you will suffer if you don't do this so there are a whole lot of poly syllables <laughs> and you have to believe it so here she says this is one place where there is complete error and falsehood that is the story of guru nanak when uh, one muslim asked him he went all the way to iran no so they asked he asked him why are you sleeping with your feet turned towards kaaba mecca so he says oh take my feet to wherever mecca is not so as they turned wherever they saw mecca there he saw mecca there but that is because of his greatness so he realized that there is a greater truth which i need to understand mecca is not a physical space mecca is an inner space which of course they forgot because they kept stoning the devil there establishing i don't know what what it means anyways so there is a physical mind and there is the higher mind where, from where the zone of light starts so higher mind is even beyond the rational mind so higher mind onwards it's like you are entering in the stratosphere from where you can go nearer to the you are in aditya l1 so it is you know taking you closer and closer to the sun for those who may not know it is the suryayan made in india made by india <laughs> okay so planes of the higher mind which receives in the form of intuitions the rays of the supramental truth between the because even on earth is the same plan everywhere between these two extremes there is a gradation of countless intermediate planes that are superimposed one upon another and which influence each other in one of the lower zones lies the practical reason in one of the lower zones lies the practical reason so there are plenty of zones that is how myths have been woven in india now they are not some people try to physical mind no no it's all true just exactly as it is written so the bear was actually speaking a human language good sanskrit now it's not that if you try to do that make it a pure physical history then you will miss the point in fact that is the best way to finish the beauty and joy of ramayana equally just as people take the other extreme this is impossible so this is all nonsense so but there is something in between and that is the beauty of indian writing and thought that it caught a glimpse of these planes and wove it into a lovely narrative so jatayu speaks so you know the monkey and the humans come together if you look at it like that it's fascinating because there are many layers which have come together in weaving the story so there are plenty of intermediate planes in one of the lower zones lies the practical reason practical reason will say how it is possible there are people who write like that wise people on kora you really believe in ramayana stories somebody flying all the way from here to sri lanka earlier they didn't bunda believed in pushpak viman also now they at least believe there are some viman so maybe who knows <laughs> there was a prototype viman but pushpak viman is a, even if you say whether it's there or not there is a possibility which the poet suddenly brings and presents before us some people say do you believe ravan had 10 heads fool everybody knows that nobody has 10 head but we understand that 10 head means a soul and ego what is there so difficult to understand so that's how the higher mind will see and there are many other aspects in one of the lower zones lies the practical reason the common sense of which man is so proud and which for ordinary minds appears to be the expression of wisdom although it still works wholly in the field of ignorance see this man turned to god see mirabai turned to god what happened to her life she was her husband 
threw her away. She lost her palace. If you see very objectively outwardly, huh? if you don't believe that there is God and ecstasy and union, what will you make out of the story? And at the end, she had to die taking poison. Is it something very nice? Physical mind will interpret like that. But Indian mind trained for long in the subtlety, Siha Meera. And they, you know, understand that fusing with the divine is the highest possibility. But common sense will say, see, this is what happens to those who turn to God. It cannot understand that this is the outer life, but there is a deep inner thread which we can see in the songs of Mirabai. So this is how it is. So ordinary mind is full of all this uh, falsehood, but it thinks it's an expression of wisdom. To this reason of plaque, Practical reason belong the polysyllables. Of course, polysyllables are the indoor. It doesn't mean using words which are having more than polysyllables. Obviously, it has to be long word, vowels, the way you pronounce it changes meaning. Meaning thereby you are playing with words. You are playing with words. So you are trying to charm the inquiry into sleep by playing with words. To this reason or practical reason belong the polysyllables of which Sri speaks the common places. Now, as I said, Mira's story seen outwardly is a tragic fate. But ask Mira, she will say, thanks to all this, my aspiration grows so intense, so intense, so intense that she says, Aisi lagi lagan, Mira ho gai magan, wo to gali gali hari gun gaane lagi. Whether she is in a palace or whether she is in out, she is singing the glory of the Lord. She would say it's a blessing. But these are the two ways. One is the so-called commonsensical way, which values only things of the physical mind values, which is artha and kama. It has not graduated into dharma and moksha. <laughs> so, so, common places and cliches, all the ready-made phrases which run about in the mental atmosphere from one brain to another and which people repeat when they want to appear knowledgeable or when they think themselves wise. So, you try to come to ashram, they will ask you and they will use all kinds of theories. No, yoga can be done anywhere. You can do it at home. You can do this way. What is there? What is the need to go to ashrams? So many. What do you get there? You get money. You get something or the other. Prosperity. It's difficult to explain because it's a different way. But the commonplace physical mind will say, yes, it is the same. Whether I am here or there. But the inner sense will understand the difference. So what does the physical mind and polysyllables do? They lull inquiry into sleep and then we begin to use cliches and think we are knowledgeable somebody asked me why did you take premature retirement I said why is, I don't have to answer to anyone no 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 you could have gone in air force and become air marshal I said yes that is true so why did you leave because I said see the, logically I am not a insane person I, I believe so so at least definitely I must have got something that I wouldn't have been able to get from there so what is that something I, that is difficult to explain because what you are getting I know that I have got that <laughs> but what I am getting you have not got that so there is no way it can be explained isn't it so it's that's what is called the physical practical mind but there is another, from another dimension when we begin to look at things, then life begins to become different. So, Sri puts us on our guard against this trite and inferior way of thinking. When we are faced with a new or unexpected phenomenon and try to explain it. And there are so many of the new phenomena in the field of science. Corona wave, new phenomenon. All kinds of things. So nobody knew that Corona wave, one of the offshoot will be some good things are going to emerge. The last of which is the movie, The Vaccine War. I'm not promoting it, but I'm just saying that, see, so many things emerge out of the challenges of life. But when you see outwardly, you see, mother centenary and all this happened. A lot of people were at that time feeling like that. 
But see what was happening. Mother had another plan. She said, don't worry, I am going to close these outer doors, but I am going to open the inner door. If you have the courage, step in and, ant and, and enter. She was doing that. And a lot of people who got that entry, suddenly you were given free entry pass. Why? Because simply because the outer <laughs> gates were closed. So it's very difficult to understand things in the commonplace way. He tells us to search always why something has happened. Don't give a that explanation which is already from standard stock phrases. For instance, why does bad things happen to good people? First of all, is it true? Bad things happen to all kinds of people. Good or bad. That means there is some reason we don't understand why bad things happen. Then comes the next logic. What do you call as bad and good? Maybe our understanding is wrong. Just because suddenly somebody is looted. You can't call that this is bad. Maybe that became an occasion for something much deeper to happen, much greater thing to be realized. So how do we know this is bad? So when we begin to inquire like that, then we reach that conclusion that there is only eternal good conquering at last. But if you see on the surface and try to use key, those cliches, then it is difficult because we understand nothing. And we only hide truth in polysyllables that he must have done some bad karma in some life. Always there is some life and some karma, good or bad. So here he says that go on searching untiringly using our highest intelligence, the intelligence which thirsts to know the true cause of things and to go on searching without being satisfied by facile and popular explanations until we have discovered a more subtle and truer truth. So what is the commonplace explanation? As I said, why do bad things happen to good people? Uh, what does Shurabindo write about it? Shurabindo at one place says, Blows do not fall in you because there is something bad in you. Blows come to all people because they are attached to things that are temporary and transient in their very nature. And when they pass away, they give you suffering. Now if you see that way, then he is giving us a sutra of living. Have everything, but don't be attached in asakti. It is there with you. Know that tomorrow it may pass. To another hand, life becomes beautiful, simple, happy. Regard that you are a trustee. It has come from the divine and tomorrow it can go away to the divine. So he's giving us a sutra. It's not because you are a bad person that this happened. Then at the same time, we shall find that behind everything, even what seems to be chance and illusion, there is a conscious will at work to express the supreme vision. No doubt this will gets distorted because of the number of layers with which we see started. But ultimately because it is the supreme vision and will, it will conquer. Whether it seem good or evil to men's eyes, only for good the eternal will can work. That's how Nara tells Ashupati that there is a meaning in each curve of fate in each line there is a purpose in each stumble and fall not that stumble is needed but in the vast play with so many things intertwined it can happen and yet this will be used for good a line of Shurabindo from which we can stop with which we can stop he says he sows it comes much later Savitri is revealing this profound truth to death God death is saying see this world you call God made see evil see this that he says, you won't understand death. The play of God. Why? He sows the seed of good in evil's monstrous bed. Can we imagine? That is the greatness and glory of the divine. Ravana destroyed. What is it? It is Ravana transformed. He who presents himself as an enemy of the Lord ends up through the destruction of his body and with it the ego, the bhakta of the Lord which he is in his origin. Namaste.